QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Customer Center. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page. And then we're going to go to the view drop down, open windows list on the left hand side, reports drop down, company and financial, PL, profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, tab 010124 to 123124, tab tab, that's January through December 2024, customizing the report fonts and numbers, changing the font, bringing it up to 12, okay, yes please, okay, reports drop down again. We're gonna to go to the company and financial, the other major report we open every time. That's why I'm doing it quite quickly here. 123124 is the date. Customizing that report, fonts and numbers, changing the font on up to 12. Okay, yes please and okay. That's our setup process. Let's go back to the open windows, go into the home page. In prior presentations, we've been looking at the customer section or the customer cycle which you can also think of as a sales cycle, the revenue cycle, the accounts receivable cycle, remembering that customers for QuickBooks means that these are people that we're providing goods or services to. We expect to be receiving typically cash at some point at the end of the cycle. We of course are customers in real life to our vendors, but from QuickBooks perspective, customers means the people that are eventually going to pay us for goods and services vendors means the people that we're buying goods and services from and eventually we'll be paying them having an outflow of the cash in that case so we're gonna we we went through the flow chart last time and just in general we're going to go through the forms shortly in future presentations but first we want to think about the customer center so the customer center can be found by just clicking it here or the, the method I typically prefer is going to the customer's drop down and the customer center up top. The reason I prefer this method is because if you're in some other window, like you have you know, a report open, this is probably the fastest way to get there. So we're gonna go to the customer center. I'm gonna minimize this item on the left to have a bit more room. I'm gonna put my cursor between these two fields so it looks like that and, and make this a little bit larger. And I'm also gonna do that here. This is kind of like Excel. You could put your, your cursor between these cells and widen them up a bit. So if you recall the, the vendor center, this will look very similar, except that of course, we're talking about customers here, people that ultimately are going to be paying us. So up top, we've got uh, the adding of the customer. So we can have a new customer, we can add a job. We'll talk about jobs later. A job cost system is kind of like a specialized kind of field or area. And you could add multiple jobs at the same time. We'll do that when we go into the practice problems. If you went into the new customer, you see all the customer data that you would add when you add uh, the, the new customer here. Now, all you really need to add a new customer is the customer name. And for the vendors, oftentimes that's all you do if you're paying the, like the utility company and it's Edison, that's all you really need to know. But for the customers, then depending on the industry you're in, you might want a whole lot more detail on the customers because you want to add them to your mailing list or whatever on the customer side of things. So it's more likely that we're going to want to populate this information. We'll get more into this information when we add customers in a future presentation. Also just want to note that when you add customers, typically oftentimes you will do so when you're creating a sales document, like a sales receipt or an invoice. So when you add customers, you could do it kind of on the fly, as they say, or as you go by making an invoice. And then if I look at the prior invoices, 
you can see the customer well it's just I've, i'm in a particular customer but the customer field is up top if that customer wasn't there and you made an invoice you could make a new invoice up top or add a new customer as you go closing that out uh no and so then we've got the new transactions now this is where quickbooks gets a little bit confusing it's convenient and yet confusing because there's multiple places just like on the vendor side of things where we see these transactions these are typically the forms that can be created if i maximize the little carrot over here and go to the home page these are the forms that will go into individually in a future presentation back to the customer center you can see you can find them in the home page and get to them there you can go to this drop down and find them here you can also go to the customer section up top and find many of the same forms as well and when you're inside a particular customer you could go to the the forms down here and create an estimate or invoice for that particular customer so a whole lot of different ways to get into you know like the same kind of of forms there so we've got the printing customer job list those are kind of reports you can find them there you can also find them under the reports uh, export the customer list again it's kind of a report that could be a little bit more convenient the word documents prepared letter and uh, the income tracker is another format for basically income tracking giving you basically the, the type of information and filtering options so so we might jump into that in a little bit more detail but it gives you a different kind of breakout of the information the estimates the 17 times uh time expenses the 21 open invoices and so on i'm going to close this back out I'm going to maximize this screen back out maximizing the screen so then on the left hand side we've got all of our customers that are populated on the left we get a nice quick little balance here uh, which tells us the open amounts the customers are people that are ultimately going to pay us so their their balances are increased with an invoice which is a bill for work for goods and services we provided for which we have not yet been paid and they go down with a receive payment now we also might have more of a cash-based system in which case they're gonna they're, we're gonna record the charging of the customer and get paid at the same point in time with a sales receipt type of form so we'll talk about the distinction of those forms in future presentations but if they have an outstanding balance, if we're tracking the accounts receivable, we are talking about a system where basically we do the work before we get paid and we have to track the fact that they owe us money. That would be the invoice form. So we also see that these, we got these sub customers here and these are basically uh, the job. And so we'll talk more about that uh, in a future presentation. I don't wanna dive in that in too much detail at this time. So if I select a particular customer on the right hand side, we've got the data. We've got the name, we've got the phone number and so on and so forth. And oftentimes, if you're gonna be interacting with, with a customer about an outstanding balance they have, for example, then this is often the place that we will go. If we're gonna say, okay, this customer has an outstanding transaction, possibly you are talking to them or something like that. You're gonna be tracking on our side. Hey, look, it looks to us like we've got this invoice that's outstanding that we have not received. What do you see basically on your side? We're trying to obviously get collection over here for that invoice. So that would be the general idea. We've got the con contact information, the to do's, the notes, uh, and then the sent emails. Going back to the first tab, the main tab that we would look at. If you wanted to edit this information, you go to the edit tab. If you want to add attachments, you can add attachments here. If we go to edit, we then get into that field that we saw for the customer field where we can see this data is, is populated within it. So we'll go into that in more detail in a future presentation. So that is, uh, is the customer area. The other place that we could go then would be the transactions tab up top. Well, before I get there, notice that we have this little drop down here where we have the all customers. We've got, basic, we've got the active customers. So, so th there could be a difference in terms of a customer that's not long, no longer active, but they have activity in them. So oftentimes we want to be looking at the active customers, customers with open balances. So now we get kind of a quick little report here of those customers that owe us money. So that's a nice, uh, a nice visual customers with overdue invoices. And so there are none. So we're going to say, okay, customers with almost due invoices, nothing there. 
and customer filter options. So we've got some some other filters that we can put in and use within here, the the active customers, the customers with open and so on and so forth, and then add some other filters. So I'm gonna close that back out. I'm gonna go back to active customers, which is typically the starting point that we would use. Down here, we've got the manage transactions. We can basically open up another transaction that will be automatically populated with with that particular customer to help us out a little bit as we go through this process we can also find of course again those forms up top we could find the forms in the customer drop down up top here we could run reports quickly you can view this report running this report quickly here all right so then we can go to the transactions tab and this is another nice way that we can basically sort this information that's related to the customer cycle, not by customer, but by form. So we've got our standard forms, the estimates, the invoices, the statement changes, the sales receipts, the received payments, and so on. Oftentimes we'll be looking at the invoices and we might be trying to sort our invoices by going to the drop down and say, okay, give me the open invoices, those which we have made, we build the client for that we have not yet received. These are the ones that we're going to be looking to make collections on. So that's a nice, useful way to sort them. Overdue invoices, there are none. So we'll bring it back to all invoices. And then you could set your, your date range this fiscal year, January through December being the date range. Similar process for, you know, any other kind of form that we would create that's within the customer cycle. Back to the customers and jobs. And just a quick note, again, you've got this other option up top. Some people might prefer this income tracker layout where you have the estimates. So here's the estimates broken out this way. So here's the, the type, the estimate, the status, again, open. You could go to, let's say the invoices, which is typically the field. And you got a similar kind of breakout here. So you could then go to invoicement statement charges. We're on the invoices, status, open or overdue and sort them in this fashion. So this is another look and feel that some people might prefer. You've got batch transactions that you can uh, record down here. So if I was to record or pick off a couple of them, I can then do a, a batch kind of email and batch transactions, which could be a useful grouping uh, mechanism to make things a little bit easier. I'm gonna be closing this back out and let's maximize this, that is maximized. So then of course, if I open up my carrot and I go to the balance sheet, the main thing we're looking to track on the accounts receivable is going to be the is going to be the accounts receivable with the sales side of things, meaning the hardest thing to track for the customers is typically the customers that we've invoiced for that we have not yet received payments on. And that's what we're usually kind of looking into if we're, if we're in a type of business where we get paid at the same point in time that we do the work and we don't have to track accounts receivable. That's usually an easier process, but we still might come up with questions like how much did I receive from one particular customer or so on and so forth, or any particular transaction. And that's when you might go to the customer center here and try to search them by customer or possibly search by transaction. You can also run similar reports to give you supporting reports to the receivables. We'll talk about this a lot more in detail in future presentations, but the main couple would be the reports drop down and you're in the customers and receivables. We got the customer balance detail. And so this gives you all the customers and the information similar to what we saw in the center. But the thing that's nice here is it gives you that total down below. So this gives you a total. We may not use this report as much because most likely we're probably gonna go to the customer center for most of the stuff you can get within it. But that 9300793 should match 9300793. The other very common report would be the reports drop down, customers and receivable, customer aging uh, summary, let's say. And so now we've got this broke out between uh, how overdue or how past due the customers are. Nothing's overdue. That's great at this point in time. But this is another report that's quite useful because it gives you more added information in terms of how past due transactions are, which gives you an indication in terms of how likely you are to collect on these particular balances. So that's a quick overview there. In future presentations, we're going to go back to the home page and we'll talk more about 
about these forms and their impact on the financial statements.